Hey folks, it's Mike with Retro RV Recon. Before we get this video started, I want to show you guys or give you guys an update on this Eternabon and seal tight on the roof of the camper. So uh, come on, let's get up there and check it out. And this is my first time looking at it in, in six months. So what you're looking at, it's the first time I'm seeing too. I'm going to the back. That was the Eternabon up front. And in the back is the seal tight. And from what I'm looking at, I can hardly tell the difference. But anyway, let's get a better look at that. All right. If y'all remember, we did a video about putting this stuff down. Now, this is the seal tight. What I'm looking at right now it looks pretty good. I'll tell you what, this stuff is sticky. Looking real good. See that? That's the seal tight. Let me go up and get a good look at the, the turnabout in the front. All right. This right here is the turnabout. See, it looks good. Got a little bubble right there, a little crease. It's kind of cold out here today, so I don't think I'll be able to mash it down much. I want to tell y'all, the reason we did that other video is because we had soft floors. And I thought maybe the roof was leaking. So, I did a little research and decided I was going to go ahead and put some of this tape up here, this Eternabon. So, I thought it was the roof leaking that caused the soft floor, but it turns out... It wasn't the roof, it was a couple of other things, and we're going to show you that in a minute. So the folks at Kent Mitchell were very nice, and they allowed us to record some stuff over there. And while we were there recording, the technician, Ron, was able to explain a whole bunch of what he was doing and explain about the damage done. And after that, Mark was uh, Mark came in on the backside and gave us some real good advice about how to maintain your camper and things to do. Now, you're going to hear Angel in the background, and not me because I was at work, so... My sweetheart went over there and took care of that for us. Toward the end of the video, you're going to see me there when we go to pick up the camper and Angel and I give the final inspection. So check this video out and then you'll learn what we learned and you'll enjoy it too. There she goes. I want to get the floor repairs done. Kent Mitchell. Hey folks, it's Mike and Angel with Retro RV Recon. We're coming to you today from... Kent Mitchell RV Sale. Very, very nice people at Kent Mitchell, which yeah. is where we bought the yeah, retro. Yeah, we bought, bought it almost two years ago, a little more than We're two. not getting rid of our retro. Either. No, we're actually getting our retro serviced. Yeah, we're getting it serviced. We have a couple of issues that are going to get resolved and they're going to hook us up. We're going to let you know what our You're busy, busy, huh? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, I love doing this. I've been in this for like 16 years. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I, I was certified years and years ago. I mean, you know, to, to like, do like the testing protocols and the safety device, uh, safety systems and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Every year they innovate, so it's like some new thing comes out. So I, I'll tell the people, a lot of people, if, as long as you've got the common sense of the basics, you're mm -hmm. going to be fine doing yeah. this because, but it's the quality uh, of knowing, I can't, I, when I fix something, I'll fix it like it's mine. Yeah. And I've got that. OCD and so. <laughs> oh, that works well. That serves us well for yes, somebody who's repairing our yes, camper. Like, uh, whenever I go to sand it down, you'll never, you'll never feel a seam. Nice. Uh, the nice. only difference uh, will be that, and I will even take, because this has been, uh, I can't stand that they use this. Whenever I go back, all of this is going to be new plywood. 
Okay. Oh, solid. Absolutely. Okay, it's instead more, of the particle board. It's so much. And you stronger. know what? It's going to be great for this area to have this instead yes, of the particle board going if forward. Because it ever did get wet. Yes. Again. This has a glue that's water soluble. So I mean, I and, the, and it's particle with yes. water. Yeah. So you can, and right there in front of the door, and mm -hmm. especially the bathroom. This is. I'm so glad. I'm glad yes, to see that. Yes, it's a good job. That's inch, an upgrade for yes, us. Yes, absolutely. It's five yeah. inches thick. Uh, I don't like putting in several pieces of wood right. uh, i want to keep it as as few pieces sure, as possible. that way you, you're uh, maintaining as much structural integrity as you can correct uh, and it's less seems to have to worry about uh sanding down putty in and, and right, it smooth again. right so awesome. uh, so the next step i'm gonna be taking the uh spare tire carrier off the back this is really cool about this unit okay because uh instead of me having to take this bottom piece of metal the bottom piece of red exterior metal off uh -huh. The way that this unit is built, that piece lands just high enough for me to take the um, spare tire carrier off and slide that piece of wood in as one piece. Oh, that's awesome. Which allows more oh, strength. Oh, that's so okay. awesome. You can see the, uh, the bracing has already been installed over the unit. Okay. That's a piece of treated 2 by 4 that has been wrapped in the Tyvek material. I see that. That protects it from the elements. Right. Um, and everything was folded in and... and uh, stapled and glued together so everything's real sealed up oh underneath. great good uh, and it also it, it just worked out that the damage area landed very uh conveniently close to a rail that we could use for structural oh that's uh, awesome for the bracing underneath the black tank being mounted right at the very back of the unit yeah. doing a floor repair to be able to if you're wanting to do a bunch of bracing underneath that presents a problem because then you'd have to drop the tank and then it's right. you know, plumbing and everything okay. else so yeah I can understand um, that did you happen to keep the pieces that were damaged they're laying right here okay right I'll go get some shots of those in yeah, a little bit like so. oh. there's, gonna be a, there's gonna and I can tell you right now uh the culprit to okay. this area right here okay, okay. Me, and Mark were talking, me and Mark were talking earlier about this segment let me just guess first, because Michael had a theory. He mm -hmm. said it was the wheels throwing water exactly. up under. Yes, ma'am. That's what it was. That's exactly. Okay. okay. We do so many of these, uh, and, you know, common sense would make you think, well, I mean, there's a door there. Uh, but we do so many of them uh, that all are are damaged right next to the fender well. So, yeah, I mean, the whether the door well. was there or not, I can almost guarantee it. It would still happen. Yes. Would a mud flap help keep that, you think, um, no from happening? Would no prevent it? Okay. What it'll take uh, is, as I'm, I'm going to take this this segment right here off, okay. I'll disassemble all this, and what okay. it has is a metal uh, fender well that comes in, and it's simply the way that they attached it and sealed it. Okay. You see, they use the Tyvek material right here. They think that that's like a, a waterproofing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure that in some instance you might could even take that stuff and cup it and then hold water in it. But right. whenever I think that whenever you put it in uh, an application like this and stretch it over corners and everything else, uh, it loses that integrity. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, okay. I don't think that it has the ability to seal the way they think it does. Okay. So what I do uh, is I make sure. Well, I'll be taking this segment out. I'll probably cut it back to about right here, uh -huh. and it'll have a little cut out to conform to the edge of the fender wheel. Okay. Uh, but when I put it all back together, of course, that gets screwed back up in. Uh, that It's like a tin. It's thin tin. Uh, okay. It's not aluminum. I think it's tin. Uh, but anyway, uh, it gets screwed back up into the bottom of the, floor, the new substrate that goes in. Uh, and then I seal everything with this stuff that we call uh, Sikaflex 221. Oh, wow. uh, some techs might use silicone or, uh, you know, caulk or something. I like using that Sikaflex because it sets up really... Uh, it never sets up hard and brittle. It stays like uh, malleable, like okay. a, almost gelatinous, like a really good. And what's the name of it again? Sikaflex. Sikaflex. Yep. Okay. 221. I'll seal all around the inside of that with that stuff, and then I'll also take a light and shine underneath it and look for any area. Uh, that just gives me, even if it looks like it could have an idea of how to leak. I, I wonder if we it. would have any of those problems on this side with that wheel. There's a possibility. Uh, we could take the... Uh, well, have actually, you looked under that panel yet? Um, I have not looked okay. under here, but okay. I did tap around under there with my fist as I went okay. under the, the rest yeah, of the Yeah, Michael did too. Question, he didn't see any real issues. I had a look here okay. uh, because of the way that the wall was. But a lot of these... Yeah, we couldn't the, figure out why it was bowing out. Uh, it, it's the... <laughs> it's the way that the frame of these things, the, the frame, if you look at it, uh, if you compare this to like a fifth wheel uh -huh. or even like a, a larger pull-behind travel trailer, the frame rails that they use, uh, it'll be like an I-beam 
or something okay. really good and solid on those other units. And these, it's a piece of bent channel, but it's okay. thinner. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so as the way, as you're pulling it down the road and it bounces on the road and everything else, uh, right. it tweaks a little bit of that. You know okay. what I'm saying? Even if it tweaks it just, you know, three sixteenths of an inch. That's where it would be noticeable. It might be enough to bug okay. the paneling. Right. If, we were concerned. Super tight, you know? We were concerned that the condensation on the inside of the windows may have been going down behind the wall. Right. Because we, whenever we do, we... We're weird. We like to go camping in freezing cold weather, but we notice a lot of condensation. We're constantly having to wipe off the windows, and we have a dehumidifier right. we use also, but it's just one of those things right there under that window. We associated it with the window, right. but well, that's, that's not... to know something else could be the culprit is, you know. Right. It's... You wouldn't be totally wrong uh, in thinking that that could be happening. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, in some instances there is some condensation. Right. Uh, even on a vacuum bonded wall, uh, it's got aluminum tubing that is the actual frame of it. Yeah. Uh, in the morning on those units, you can actually see on the wall the, the tubing. That oh, goes, wow. You can see the pattern of the bracing because the condensation uh, wow. won't gather where the aluminum is, but it will with the styrofoam. Where the styrofoam is. In the wall is, yes. Oh, wow. So it's pretty cool. It's so knowledgeable, so but like there was no damage back here to no, the floor then. No. Okay. No. All right, like good. Said, well, that's a relief. Let me just. Yeah, uh, and what, make sure that one when Ben came in uh, yesterday, he was looking at it. He said, what's kicking that out at the bottom? I said, well, I had taken that piece of trim. There's a piece of trim that goes all the way down. Uh -huh. uh, and it staples on, and it'll hold that corner in. When we okay, go back good. Uh, this is something else that I can absolutely commend you on. Okay. Uh, and it's kind of cool that you're on video for this because you got a world of witnesses. Okay. It, I wish the entire RV world uh, maintained their black tank the way you'll have. Oh, Because you. you can see it's totally open. Yes. And we're standing here without clothespins on our nose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's we're always a joke about people not chewing their food if it smells really, really bad. Uh, yeah, but it's all maintenance. Runs? Yeah, it's all maintenance. We do do the drop-ins. Mm -hmm. Listen to me saying do do. <laughs> <laughs> when we get, I love those. When like, I know, that, it's just that that. Yeah, yeah. When we get home, we put the drop-ins even after he's rinsed it and cleaned it, and of Absolutely. course with the shower That's the only way to sprayer do. back there that we what do they call that thing? The sand flush. The sand. Okay. Yeah. Even after that, he puts a little bit. Um, like I think two gallons maybe mm -hmm. and puts a drop in. Any of the products we use, we're gonna include a link in the description. So check that out. Because we need to be ready to go at a moment's notice and we don't ever, it never gets to set up. This is the longest we've ever not been on the road oh, ever. Right. Wow, we yeah. usually go two or three times a month, especially yeah. for our channel. Right. And so, yeah, it's been a struggle just to um, well, just that to worry about that. It's a blessing so. on the tech. Well, good. It's, uh, awesome. Good. I'll make sure Michael it hears sure that. Didn't, it sure did. Because, I mean, you know, you, yeah. you dread pulling the toilet. Oh, I'm sure. This I'm time, sure. it's like yeah. one out of every 20 or 30 toilets you might pull that might not be just rancid. Well, good. Michael will be happy to hear that so because he he can't stand that that's i mean who can stand the yeah, smell yeah. you know but other people's fun because a lot worse than your own so Too i can understand that. being a technician how horrible that must be for you uh, well that I, I mean i've okay. had that almost have me lose my lunch before but not, oh not almost as quick as someone bringing in uh, a freezer full of deer meat oh my god that they has sat that outside for two months are you oh, kidding look. me <laughs> When I first started oh working God. in Baton Rouge, I started working That's over at Blanchard, Blanchard's RV. And it was my like second week there, and I was wanting to really kind of score points my boss and all that. So there was oh. a unit pulled up in the driveway. Smelled it before I got off the roof of the unit I was working oh, on. Oh, gosh. And so he's walking across the parking lot, and I was like, Hoyt, I know you don't want to mess with that. And he goes, no, I don't think no one would. Yeah. There's maggots. And oh, I was like, my oh, God, goodness. Maggots. I said, oh. man, I'll, I, oh, so I'll do it right before I go to lunch. And he goes, no, you ain't got to mess with it. And I was like... Okay, well, anyway, I jumped down off that unit and I went and I did it. But you cleaned it. It makes you wonder. It, it's one of those instant regret things. Yeah. You're like 15 feet away from it and you're already thinking, why did I do this? Why did I do this? So anyway. It makes you wonder <laughs> if that's how they keep their camp or what's their home life like. You know, because it's an extension. You're right. Of you're who exactly you are. right. And well, so, in, to the common sense people, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. people with too much money or they got like big fifth wheels and they don't care. Yeah. They'll, they'll leave something to crawfish in a cooler oh knowing gosh. what's going to happen. But it doesn't matter. Oh, they, you know, well, we take care of our retro day. because our retro takes care of Absolutely. us. So that's retro. how we feel. We love it too. It's For us, it was the perfect couples camper when mm -hmm. we bought it. And you wouldn't so even believe 
Yes. Because it's not a big yes. fifth wheel. You don't have to worry. No. Yeah, it's easy to pull. It is. It's so easy. We, we started out with a 1500, a Ram 1500, but now we're up to the 2500 because nice. we're going across the continent. We have plans when Michael retires here in the next few years to go across Canada, go to Alaska, oh, so and go up, you know, to uh, Nova Scotia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah we're, it, we're heading out. We're going to be gone. Our plan is to be gone three or four months out of the year at a time. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple times a year. Right. So, because then, you know, he won't have to come back for work. Oh, He'll be done. So, yes. yeah, that's our plan. So, take care of our baby while Absolutely. you have her. And this is the shredded wheat. Uh, some of some well, shredded wheat. Yeah. This is like yeah, this stuff that came out from under the, the edge of the wall and back by the very back behind the toilet is the wettest Where part. it was really bad. Um, and then this yeah. is the segment right here in front of the door. Okay. Uh, and this wow. is another segment. That's where the toilet was at as well. Where was this? The that toilet? Was, yeah, that was okay. the circle cut for the toilet right there. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. All right. Well, I, I think I timed it perfectly. I was hoping that I would I'd project, catch it kind of yeah, in the middle, the middle phase, yeah. so I can share with people what it was like. Well, so okay. here's our bits and pieces. Yep, that's the your bathroom door. The yeah. The okay, dining awesome. table. The good deal. Oh, I can see where the shredded wheat you're calling it <laughs> yeah, came down. Out, yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Ron. Yes, ma'am. It's not a problem. Again, good evening. I'm going to let you get back after yes, it. Hi, we'll right, guys. Back at Kent Mitchell this morning to check the progress of the retro. Uh, let's go inside and see what progress has been made. This looks really good, Ron. I can tell that it matters to you. This one, the job that you did. The wall there, where oh, there really? was some studs that that wall, that paneling wasn't attached to. Oh wow! So I got it to suck back in. I was just about to ask because it's so flat. Yeah, that's amazing. Found out that that wasn't attached. So. Oh, that's so awesome! Thank you so much. <laughs> I tell you what, Kent Mitchell, let's get you on. Well, I. Uh, I enjoy doing it. I mean, and I've been doing it for, I don't know, over 15 years, 16 years, something like that. Awesome. The reason I originally enjoyed it was because it's a different challenge every day. You come in, yeah. you, know, you might be doing a roof job for two or three days in a row, but the next thing you might do might be a, a leveling system or a refrigerator diagnosis. You yeah. know, Pretty neat about it. And yeah, then I've never really thought of, about uh, that, but that's true. And a lot of different makes and models, too. Yes, and they're always innovating and changing. Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, new every, every other year or so, or every few years, something new comes out that, you know, uh, you'll have to take a class on or get schooled on, you know, to keep your yes yeah, your prowess up. Yes, yeah. 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 And, uh, but I do like it. Uh, if it's you want to, we'll go out there real quick, and I'll show you that yeah, gap okay. and uh, show you the history of why that was. All right. Uh, we thought that that was where it originated. Three months or so. You just need to go around the unit and just like just kind of look around it and make sure because if you notice right here, let me see. Me. All he did was to come over here and barely he could just barely already see a crack. Oh yeah. And then when you just barely pull it loose, you know this is going to bounce going down the road, right? Oh absolutely. So that's just the perfect place for water to get in. Yeah. There may be areas around through here where there could be water coming in. And then we we'll just go down the inside of the wall. Yes, ma'am. It just trails right down. Okay. Uh, and the thing is that that OSB like we were talking about the other day, yeah. with it being particle wood, uh, it wicks water. You know, it, it'll actually, water will travel up a wall. Oh, wow. Defying gravity to, because water wicks into wow. the fibers, you know. Uh, yeah. Another I, another possibility could have been that it was uh, a loose connection either on the inside here where, okay. they, where it connects to the outside outlet or okay. on the inside where the, the water uh, supply comes into the toilet. Okay. You know, where there's a fitting out right there, there in the very back. Yeah, well, I think that's where we first noticed it was right. behind the toilet. Uh, before we let it go, I'll go around and reseal all of that whole back wall. Okay. Um, we'll look at that back rail where your roof, roof transition comes off onto the metal. Okay. And we'll go through and clean to begin with so whatever we're going to be resealing has a real clean a surface to it. Because that's a lot of times text will just like, they'll be in a hurry and they'll right. cover up the bam and they'll just come through and but, uh, that solvent make sure that it's a, a proper surface yeah. for that for the silicone to re adhere to. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any place there's a penetration on that wall. Okay. At all. The okay, the good. marker lights, uh 
that that water inlet. It's the original linoleum. Oh wow. Okay. We had another roll that we were going to use, but because of the way that it got stored up there, it was in an oval. And Mark walked out, and he pulled it down for me while I was at lunch the day before yesterday. And when I got back, I told him, I said, that's not round. It's never going to lay out flat, and it's yeah. cold. Linoleum oh, wow. does not like to lay. It's hard to work with when it's cold. So, so I'm glad we were able to reuse this. Yes, and what he said, awesome. man, he said, uh, the way that you cut that out and you saved it under the unit, he said, could you go back with that? I said, well, it's not torn anywhere. Right. I said, awesome. as long as it's not, I said, it's going to have to mark it not spotless. I'm not using it. Well, can I tell you something? <laughs> when my husband saw the video of it laying on the floor, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to get so stained from them walking. He goes, no, baby, it's because it won't have any creases in it. That's why they lay it out flat. That's right. So that was smart. Yes. Yeah. Well, and another thing too, uh, if it had been right back there was the only part where it was wet underneath. Right. Uh, so I made sure that whenever it, cause it got pulled out and then turned around, if you remember, like the legs were sticking, these legs right I here were remember. sticking out. Okay. Yes. So this part had a board laying underneath it, flattening right. and keeping that because if it's damp or has been saturated, as, as it dries, it'll curl. Oh wow! Oh, it's just one of the oh, characteristics wow. of it. And it, and and we didn't have that problem. No, well, I, put, I wanted to lay something on the back of it to keep it flat, awesome. so that that way it didn't have that top, that opportunity to curl. And it wouldn't have really mattered much because we're going back to three H shoe molding right. around that area. But for but my piece of mind, knowing with your yeah, OCD, that's right. Yeah, I just want it flat. Yeah, so, uh, I've been doing this a long time, and that is that is one of the most difficult uh, oh, things to try to do is to lay out new. And yeah, because people do not want seams. No, <laughs> no, seams and cause that's, problems. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's right. but in this wall, you yeah. said once you took it out and you were able to restaple it to the studs. Did you see any damage in there at all? Because no, that was a real gotten, concern. No, we were okay, here the good. other day. Uh, well, you were here the other day, and we were looking at the floor, right. and there's no signs of water leak or okay. no kind of rod or anything like okay. that. Okay, awesome. Uh, good, good deal. So we're good there. Okay. Uh, and I was actually, when you were talking about the possibility of there being condensation or something like mm -hmm. that around coming out you know, of the window. Yeah, that's what our biggest concern was with that. I will go out there uh, and just yeah. be sure that on these front windows, they have sealant around. Because sometimes they'll awesome. use a foam gasket uh -huh. in between but on a corrugated metal unit you know, like this you have to seal it you can't not seal it because right. it should have some yeah uh yeah i just don't trust the foam seal uh foam yeah. gasket thing well so you anyway. would know because you're the one that's dealing with all the issues it <laughs> causes right? right well we'll just like i said we'll just right. make sure that it's sealed up really nice uh okay and you know it's uh it's not just peace of mind for y'all it's i i want to know that the unit's going to hold it's going to be a, a good repair right uh i don't have a lot of comebacks as a matter of fact i don't know one comeback that i've had since i've been here in almost two years so. oh wow that's amazing um, see that's the testament to good work right there when you don't have any comebacks well I, awesome. think I can pay all of that right back to my dad and my papa because uh, they was uh definitely men that wanted to know that they were doing the right thing good job doing it right the first time yeah my anytime daddy used to touch, say do it right or do it over well so. and anytime you touch something twice you're wasting money there so. you go <laughs> the reason i love this stuff is after you get uh after you get the unit back you bend down and feel around that stuff and feel the tacky okay uh like the firmness and how it sets up It That's doesn't go solid though, right? It stays no, it pliable. stays really pliable, like okay. a rubber, really good. Okay. But it has the reason I love it is because it's got such an adhesion property. Okay. Uh, it really, whenever you put it on, so it's like silicone really has a good adhesion property as well. But this stuff, once awesome. it sets up, uh, silicone can crack over time. Uh, it can be really affected by UV rays, etc., etc. Oh, wow. This is what I swear by. Oh, I good. love this stuff. Awesome. Thank you so uh, much. Whenever I go to see my bath here, my bathroom back up at my house. I'll be getting this in white uh, to, go <laughs> to fix that problem. Because caulk, caulk yellows, and you know, if you use like acrylic caulk or something, yeah, it does change colors. But yeah. that stuff stays what it is for as long as I've seen it. So. Awesome. Uh, All right. Well, let me shut this camera. Off. And that was Ron. And as you can see, Ron is an excellent tech and he did a great job on our camper and Angel and I really appreciate everything he did for us. He shared so much of his knowledge about campers and maintenance that we just, as you can see, it was a whole bunch of stuff. So we really appreciate that. Appreciate it, Ron. Excellent job. This next piece you're about to watch, um, we got a phone call and we got the phone call to go pick up the camper. It was the, it was the day of our Tennessee vacation. Big deal for us because we didn't want to have to postpone anything. So we go over there to, to do the final inspection. Angel and I walk in the camper and we saw there was a leak, a water leak coming from the toilet. We thought, wow, so let's, you know, what's wrong with this? 
So we went to talk to Mark and Mark walked into the camper and he saw it and immediately he got on this, on uh, the issue, took care of it immediately. Everything was good after that. You'll see, and he, he goes through what happened. So you'll be able to see that in the video. All right, yeah. All right so okay. tell us the situation, Mark. Okay, so what's going on right now is the, the fitting that attaches to the toilet, the gasket in it was crushed. So we actually tried to change the gasket. It don't want to seat in there, right? So we're just going to put a whole new fitting on it okay. and stop that leak, take okay. care of that. Okay. okay the leak was coming from the toilet. It, from the where the fitting goes to the toilet. Okay. Yeah, where the water line hooks to it. Right. Okay, so, so since you mentioned that, uh, we had some floor work done you guys did. Do y'all know with a good chance of a good percentage where the water was leaking in from? Yes, and it was leaking in from two places, actually. One was the license plate light back yep, here at the you back. You showed me that yeah. when we first came here. And the other one was this fender well right here. Okay. This back corner, this fender well. And retros, a lot of retros have the same issue where that fender well attaches from the outside. It doesn't get a good seal. And as you're driving down the road in wet rain, wet roads, you hit mud puddles, Splashing water up. splashes up and gets between that fender well okay. and the floor. And it rotted out this part of the floor right okay. here. And a couple of times, our, a couple of our trips have been in rain. I mean, mm -hmm. driving, driving in rain. So, so if you're a retro good. owner, it's something you need to keep a close eye on. Yeah. Is, is the fender wells. Um, and I have heard that. What mm -hmm. concerns me is, was the other fender well checked? No, no, I took all of this out and I checked the floor oh, back did. under there and it's all nice and solid. Of oh, course, I didn't did. take the cabinets out, yeah. but I, I took this uh, breaker panel here out so I could okay, get back good. in there and I so filmed around check. with that. Yes. Okay. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of the photos that I saw, um, I saw three sections of floor that were, or three new pieces of plywood yep it was the bathroom area right around this area right here and underneath this okay that's the three sections that we changed out okay we were able to get the same thickness of the, well, the floor that was already there just cut out all the bad spots put it all together secured them so they don't go back and forth like this and then we put a, a good layer of filler over top sanded it down smooth and yeah, uh, i saw that too saw yep that too. you'll never yeah. know that there was a seam there So something that I also noticed was um, it doesn't look like it was changed under the tub. Under the tub? Yes. Sir. No, we didn't pull out behind the tub. We were trying to do a cost effective here, like okay. all it asked okay. us for. Yes. Sir. So that would have added another ten or hours or so to the to the bill. Okay. So I mean, if that's something you want to explore in the future, you know, it'll be a lot easier to do just that little section yeah. than to tear everything out of here. And then it's understand. also. Well, yeah, I was, I was, that's what we were thinking. The answer would be, you know, I because we were trying to, yeah. well, both from yeah. time yeah. crunch and mm -hmm. expense. There are metal cross braces under here. There's metal cross beams and all of this wood is sitting on those metal cross beams and it's actually screwed down to those cross beams. Okay. So it's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. All right. So, um, I know he's still working on it, but I think the foundation is pretty solid, right? There we go. <laughs> Wait to the camera. <laughs> the only time you'll ever see me sitting on this thing. See, you guys sealed some around. Y'all sealed around the. the, the we resealed the, the entire back half of the, the camera. whole back side. Oh, yep. Even this too. Yep. The marker lights up there. Your rear camera mount. Okay. So, and of course, this was the culprit right here. Yes, this is where all of this rotted out from, because there was a big gap right I here. Remember our first you day. Yep. The first day oh, I came over here, you pointed that out. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. Right. We even came around on the side and did your marker light over here. Okay, awesome. Basically, use any kind of clear silicone on this. It's, it, yeah, yeah. That's good, though. I'm real glad you guys came behind mm -hmm. behind there and did that. This one doesn't have any on it, though. I guess that was still good. Yeah, you can, can see that the it. seal's good around it. Okay. Even when you pull on it like this, there's you can no see there's cracks. no cracks. Okay. 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 Yeah. And that's what we want to look for. I tell everyone, let's do a 30-day, a 60-day, and a 90-day maintenance schedule. 30-day schedule is something you do every single day. You're walking around the camper. You're going from this side to that side. And you're just, you're looking at stuff as you walk by. It's that easy. On the 60-day, we want to get a ladder and look at the things that we can't see from down here. Like these marker lights, the tops of your windows, the tops of the doors. On a 90-day, we want to get up on the roof. We want to check everything from the roof down. Look for limbs. Make sure nobody threw water gras beads and beer cans up there at the last tailgate party. Yep. Let's make sure it stays clean. 
and you can see those seals. If you start to see issues, take care of it immediately. Don't wait. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and uh, y'all didn't have to replace the whole floor. No, no, no. We actually we, turn it on. Yeah. yeah, we were actually able to reuse linoleum, so we Excellent. didn't have to. That's another cost saving part. We didn't yeah, have to good. go for the linoleum. All right, coming on. There. Yeah. Nice Did y'all glue? Is the the new plywood screwed to the floor? Yes, it is screwed to the cross members. And the the uh, the, the floor itself, the tile. The is linoleum. That, does that just lay down? That's just laid down on the floor. Right. Good to go. Awesome. Good. All right, let's go check it out. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just look. When you made the decision not to replace what's under the hub or hub or under these cabinets, was it dry? To touch yes, the yes. Once we took everything out, we actually put fans in here. And let the fans blow on them for about 48 hours. Without yeah. Vinyl. Without the vinyl. Uh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Because that, that was another question I had. Because yes. if it's dry, uh, then we, yes. we feel good about yeah. that. Yep. We also replaced any wet insulation that we found as well. So oh, okay. was, was there much? Or there wasn't a whole lot. Okay. It was mainly in that back corner back yeah. there. So we just pulled all the wet insulation out and put fresh stuff in there. All right. Let's go see how much money we need. <laughs> okay. So that was Mark. And as you can tell, Mark's got a lot of experience with RVs as well. We were very pleased that not only did they, they deliver the camper on time, the time they promised they would, but the cost for all the repairs matched the estimate they gave us. So that was excellent. We were really pleased about that. We were really able to enjoy our, our uh, vacation. It's, it was really nice to know that Ron doing a repair work is as thorough as he was. And at the end, Mark was able to explain everything that, you know, that I could understand, that Angel could understand, and it just really went well. So that was really good on Mark's end. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, it was also cool to see through the, the last couple of segments you watched, the perspective, how things went through the eyes of the technicians. So you, you saw what Ron had to say. You see what he's got to work with and what he's got to deal with as a technician working in RVs. And then you can see where Mark was coming from with a lot of the information he had. So for Angel and me, it's like, that's some really good stuff, you know. There's a lot of things we learned from the two of these guys, and there's a whole lot of uh, preventive maintenance that we'll do in the future because of these two guys as well. If somebody does a good job, point it out to them that you're, you're doing a good job, and we appreciate it. So that's this is us doing that right now. The next segment we're about to roll into, you'll see Mark. Mark took it upon himself to check out a few things, and I'm glad he did uh, because he, you know, he probably saved us. A lot of aggravation in the future. Right. So what is what is it called? An anode? Anode. 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 Yep. A N O D E. So this is not a good one, and this is a good one. Yep. This is a brand new one. This is one that's about six months past its uh, due date. Six months. Yep. About yeah, every just... six months, you should pop the plug out of this water heater, which is this plug right here. Yep. If it looks like that, pop that out. Let that water heater completely fully drain. And if you got a way to do it, shove some water hose up in there and let it spray around in there. You see all this white stuff on the ground out here that come out of that water heater. So okay. the white stuff, is that just from this degrading? It's calcium buildup okay. and mineral deposits from okay. the hard water. Okay, awesome. Okay, and you never know when you're camping what kind of water quality you got. Yeah, right. You know, right. A so, lot of times, especially when we went out west, it was pretty hard water. Yeah, that's why we check this about every six months. Okay, awesome. If this rod is more than 50% eaten away, it's time to change it. Well, we were probably due to change that a long time ago. Yes, sir. It's about 20 bucks or less. Okay. Yep. Yeah, very inexpensive. And this is a inch and a sixteenth socket. And it'll take it right out of there. A little Teflon tape to stop it from leaking when okay. you put the new one back in. So that size is specific for this camper? For this it's camper. specific to that okay. water heater. Okay. What made you decide to check that one? Just because I saw this. And anytime I see one that's rusted like this, I want to check it. So it's I not look necessarily at it. tied to 
the water no, no, no. that we have. Not at all. Eventually, if you don't replace this, all those calcium deposits that eat this away is going to start eating the inside of your tank. Oh. And eventually it will eat a hole through it, and yes, you will get a water leak. Okay. So $15 now or $1,500 later? Absolutely. If you find value in the videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell, that way you get the latest videos too. Say that these, these, these technicians, you know, uh, I have a lot, a lot more respect for, for their role and what they do. Uh, like Angel said, it was an eye-opening experience, and uh, we got to see the world of the technicians through their point of view, and they shared a lot of information with us and a lot of experience with us. You know, kudos to Ron and Mark, and also kudos to Kent Mitchell, the, the folks over at Kent Mitchell, because everybody we deal with over there, they're awesome people. And just so you know, we're not getting compensated for this video. This is straight up the experience Angel and I have had with these people. All fixed. Ready for vacation. Over by you, by the Delta. There's a river that runs both ways. And the cypress as